So it's called Kindness, Naomi Shihab Nye. And she says, before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. Feel the future dissolve in a moment like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved, all this must go so you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride, thinking the bus will never stop. The passengers eating maize and chicken will stare out the window forever. Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the Indian in a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you. How he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must speak to it till your voice catches the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the cloth. Then, then it's only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to mail letters and purchase bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you've been looking for, and then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. Kindness by Naomi Shihab Nye. So if you'd like to join me for all a moment, of course, you're very welcome to. You know, Bring your palms together, or leave them on your knees, take a deep breath in and out. A really sweet, filling, wide breath. Oh. And we'll start on hands and knees today so starting on all fours and just doing your thing that you do you know start to move the pieces around and start to feel your way into your bones in a, a really sincere way where you really honor what you feel there and move all the parts that you can head neck shoulders eyes spine belly heart, elbows, knees maybe. We're just gonna build and build and build today until we end up with a, a really sweet kind of a dance that we all make together. And so from your cat and cows, you can take it back into a child's pose, just snuggle back and from your Child's pose, you're gonna roll up. And as you roll the spine up, walk the hands a little bit behind you. Take a little baby camel, nothing too major, just enough. And then going right back into child's pose, just take that in reverse and pull down. As you come up from there, it's gonna be rounded cat back. This is something we often do from the cat, just pushing everything forward until you eventually empty your whole body down onto your belly, your chest, and your forehead. The full prostration, but today the hands in a prayer, the prayer behind the head, so the thumbs come towards the base of the skull. And then as you let the arms extend out again, slide your right hand back. Pull the right knee up towards it and just fall onto your back, open the arms wide, and take your morning's version, your first version of a supine twist. You might wiggle or rock a little bit, turn anything, the head or the belly a little more or a little less. And then we'll just kind of fall back onto the front for a cobra, so legs long, hands under shoulders as you lift the heart. Feel your legs streaming long behind you, wide, long, anchored legs, and then round your way back into child's pose. 
And so that's our foundation today. We'll try it on the other side, rolling up, the hands kind of crawling behind you to lift the pelvis. Doesn't have to be a lot. And then as you come down, just spill your way right back down into child's pose. And come up through your super duper rounded cat back and move your hips forward, forward, forward until the thighs come down, the hips come down, the belly comes down, the heart comes down. Full prostration with the prayer tapped behind the head. Right hand to the floor, left hand next to your chest. Slide the left knee up towards the hand and then fall onto your back, fall to the back of your heart, spill your waters out. Try to release any gripping anywhere that you might find it. All resistance, all defenses, just for a moment, all defenses down. And then spilling back over like a puddle on your belly. Bring the arms with you. Take them underneath your shoulders, legs streaming back like water. Heart climbs up, cobra. And then roll it back into child's pose. And then each time we go through this vinyasa, we'll just add one or two little more things on it. So roll your way up, fingers tiptoe behind you, little camel. And from little camel back to the ground, child's pose. Mm. Rounded, rounded cat back all the way through onto your belly. Drip yourself down one inch at a time. Prayer behind the head for prostration. Drop the left hand, pull the right one back next to you. Right knee slides up towards your side. Spill over onto your back. Take your twist. Mm. This time, as you come back around onto your belly, take that right arm. Stretch it straight out horizontally from the shoulder. Bring your left hand next to your left chest. Bend your left knee. And you're going to push yourself over the right edge of your body into this little broken wing. And you can play with the position of that right arm. You might even pick up that bottom shoulder, scooch the hand away a little bit, or move it up or move it down in space. And defenses down. Skin soft. Then go ahead and roll back onto your belly. Hands under shoulders for cobra. And then roll your way back into child's pose. And we'll do that on the other side. Rolling up, fingertips behind you. Lift the pelvis. Maybe you tip the head back if you can keep your jaw and throat kind of soft. And then come down. Child's pose again, send your arms forward and then come through your rounded back on all fours. Keep going forward, forward, forward until it turns, kind of goes through a cobra down to the belly. Hands in the prayer behind the head, full prostration. Right hand down, left hand by your chest, left knee slides up, twist, fall into your back and just be like water for a moment. And this time as you come around, you're gonna take that left arm, send it straight out horizontally on the floor. Right hand next to your chest. Right knee bends, and you push over like a big steamroller over the edge of you into this little broken wing asana, I think it's called sometimes. And any amount of scooching that left arm a little further away from your body could, if there's room and it doesn't feel like too much. Mm. 
And bring it back onto your belly. Lift your chest, cobra, and around your back, child's pose. And then we'll add on just a little more. So roll up. You have your hands behind you, your hips to the sky, as much of a back bend as your body longs for. And then come down and take your child's pose. Super rounded back pulls you forward all the way down onto your front side. Prayer behind the head, full pranam. Drop the hands, slide the right hand back, pull the right knee up by your chest, roll onto your back twist. And from the twist onto your belly, right arm straight out from the shoulder, left hand by your chest, left knee bends, broken wing. Bring it back onto the belly. This time, so here's where we'll change it a little bit. You're gonna take your hands right under your shoulders, but a teensy bit wider, even a teensy bit back. Tuck your toes, lift your knees up off the floor. Try to lift your thighs, make your legs really strong and slowly come up to plank pose. Try to lift your butt the same as your shoulders. Not easy, downward dog. And from downward dog, breathe your right leg up and back behind you, right knee to right shoulder or upper arm. And right leg back, right knee to the nose. And right leg back, right knee to the left elbow. We're gonna take fallen triangle. So once it arrives there, stretch the leg out straight, put the foot down and lift your left arm up to the sky. And then I can go ahead really slowly here so that you really have to work for it in your center. Put your left hand back down. Maybe you can even pick up that right leg before you start to bend it and bring it in and step back downward dog. From downward dog, touch your knees down, child's pose. Take a moment, recover. And then we'll do that on the other side. Roll up, fingers behind you, little baby camel. Come back down, fold forward, child's pose. Super roundy spine, shift it forward all the way down onto your belly, full prostration, prayer behind the head. Right hand down, left hand next to you, left knee slides up and you fall into your twist. Hmm. Into the broken wing, come back onto your front side, stick your left arm out, right hand by your chest, right knee bends, roll over the left side of you. Little teeny wing. And as you bring it back onto your belly, we'll set up for that plank pose. So hands gather, strength gathers, toes tuck, legs engaged. So hips and shoulders, trying sort of, if you can, at the relative same time, and then downward facing dog. And when you arrive there, it'll be your left leg. I'll mirror you, left leg to the sky, left knee to left shoulder, left leg to the sky, and left knee to the nose round your back left leg to the sky and left leg under right arm. Bring the knee towards the opposite elbow and then stretch it out. Pluck your right arm up off the ground, turn your belly, chest, heart, throat, everything towards the sky and light it up. And then go slowly and deliberately back. The right hand comes down. Try to pick up that left foot off the floor, even just for a split second before you pull the knee in and step back downward facing dog. 
Let your knees down, take a child's pose. And then I'm gonna have you just watch the next little bit here. I wanna show you where we're gonna go with it. So it'll be the same, except that when we get, um, we'll take that broken wing, right? We'll do this business. And then when we come back, we're gonna take that broken wing arm, thread it under the other one, cross that arm, and so the arms are crisscrossed. We'll take a little drop of the head here, bring them out, come back, do all the other stuff. Once we get to here, here's where it's gonna change. So we're in this fallen triangle. I'm gonna take my hand to the skull and try. This is a do your best kind of moment. And see if you can pick up oy, that bottom leg, bend it and curl towards it. We're gonna go one and stretch it out and two and stretch it out and three and stretch it out and then try to really slowly sit it all the way down. Whoa. You know, walk through the middle. You're gonna come back, wipe, wipe, wipe. Come in this way and then take it towards the pigeon, but I'm not going down. I'm gonna keep lots of space here. And I'm gonna use arms opening and arms rounding a couple of times like that, okay? So that's where we're headed. So start in child's pose. Hmm. Dragging fingers back, rolling up until your fingers climb behind you, little camel, baby, baby. Maybe we're like a teenager, a preteen now. And as you come down, you can spill back down into child's pose. Come up through your rounded cat back, right? You don't even have to really listen to me here. You know what to do and spill down. Prayer behind the head, that moment of, of humility, of just being like the ground beneath you. And then as you stretch your left arm up, right hand next to you, right knee slides up, fall into your twist. Come on back, right arm sticks out to the side, left hand by your chest, broken wing. And then here's where it'll change. Come on back to your belly. And you're gonna take that right arm, pick it up, thread it under, palm down underneath the left shoulder. And then walk your left hand over to the right like you're gonna tie yourself up in a knot. Walk the hands as far apart as they'll go and then let your head drop. Hmm. This three breaths, I know it's probably not the most comfortable place, but hopefully not the worst either. Hmm. And go ahead and gather yourself to get ready for plank. So hands under shoulders, toes curl, legs engage, slow motion, elevator goes up. And then downward facing dog. So you're gonna take your right leg, right leg up to the sky behind you, and right knee into the nose. Oh, sorry, right knee to right shoulder. That's first, doesn't matter really. Right leg to the sky, right knee into nose. Right leg to the sky and right knee to left elbow. Toppled triangle, slow motion here. So we really have to stay present. Once you put the foot down, reach your left arm up, look up maybe. Hand to the base of the skull. Gonna try to get really grounded through that left foot. So that maybe you pick the right leg up, bend the knee, elbow to knee, curl in. Try to stretch the leg out. Maybe you have to put it down or maybe you can hover it. One and two and three. This time, slow motion to set yourself down. Wide leg seat. Flex your feet, toes point up. Take a walk through the middle. Hmm. As you walk yourself back in, you can bend your knees and put your feet on the floor with bent knees. 
And just let your knees go side to side. Let's do it one, two, three, or four times and take it over to the left side. And then you're gonna kind of stand up on those knees. And don't worry whichever direction you're facing. It really doesn't matter, but if you need to rearrange, please do. So the um, left leg is in front. You're gonna to start to slide your right leg back. So you come to a hovering pigeon with the left leg in front. So keep some space underneath you. Take the arms, open them out, turn them out. So roll the palms to face up or even face behind you. Find any amount of back bend. And then roll the arms in. Keep your pelvis lifted, but just round your back. And do that twice more. So you could inhale, roll it open, arching and extending. And then exhale, roll in, draw the navel in and round. One last time. And this time, after this, you can let it go. You can put your hands down. You can slide that back leg back a little bit more to come all the way down. And then take a, a sleeping version here. So any shifts or adjustments you want to make, if it doesn't work for your knee to be here, just do it this way. And there's so many options with this one. You can walk your hands out on either diagonal. You could even take a twist if you wanted to. You could stay upright if that's what you need. Just another couple of breaths. And we're going to take it back into a downward facing dog. So start to gather yourself back in. Take your toes under, step your front leg back. Give it a moment, just kind of shake it off, rinse it away. Go through the washing machine. And then you can come back to child's pose and we'll do that on the other side. So starting low to the ground, soft. Roll that fingers behind you, little camel. And the little camel falls back into child's pose. Through your rounded, rounded cat back, all the way onto your belly. And then prayer behind the head, full prostration. Right arm stretches out, left hand comes by your chest fall into your twist, left knee comes up by your hand and you fall onto your back, that's it. And as you roll back onto your belly, left arm sticks straight out to the side, broken wing. You put your right hand by your chest, bend your right knee and roll over that left side, left hip. Now, as you go back, you go back onto your belly. You're going to take that left arm, thread it underneath the right one, palm down, cross it that way, right hand goes the other way, crossing arms just as much as they'll go. And then head just can release to wherever it sort of lands most organically without force here. Here's, you know, for me, this one is a big one where I often defend a lot. It's hard to give in with this one. So if there's anywhere at all that you could let go, just five or 10% more, we'll see if that's possible. And then as you start to unthread the arms, you can gather the hands a little wider than the shoulders, tuck your toes under to rise up into plank, butt and shoulders together. This one gets easier. I know it's not at first. And then downward dog, nice work, Chris. And so it'll be the left leg to the sky and the left knee to the left shoulder. Gather your belly in and then send the leg flying again and take it like it's gonna, the knee is gonna pierce your forehead. And then last time it flies away and it comes towards the right elbow, topple triangle, fly your right arm up to the sky. It's so slow, mindful, yeah. And then hand to the skull, try to lift that left leg, Right elbow to left knee. <laughs> I know, it's really hard, isn't it? So one time, stretch it out. 
you need the floor, use it two times and stretch it out. And then last one, three times. This time as you stretch the leg out, you can slowly just sit yourself right down, wide legs, take it out through the middle of them. Come on up, gather your hands behind you, your feet to the floor pretty wide. Wash them right and left a bunch of times. Nobody. And this time you'll end up, you'll go to the right. And when the knees drop to the right, you can stand up on them. And then just start to slide that left leg back. And you're going to stay lifted, so you're not going to let it just totally collapse. You're holding yourself together. It's like, it's really bright. And then take the arms and they open out as you lift the sternum and they roll in as you let your heart really be absorbed into your chest. Do that three times total. Heart flies out. Heart snuggles back in. Heart out to the world, heart back to you. And then you can take your version of a pigeon that feels sort of like a, a home, a nice home for you. It feels lovely, you could fold it, you could twist it, you could gather your props, you could turn it around and take it ankle to knee. Hmm. Could start to make your way slowly back to a downward dog. Take your time. Give your down dog a little tread through the legs or a little shake out wherever you need it. And then go ahead and just touch your knees down for a second to watch. So last little thing that we're gonna add on. Yeah, if you need to turn around, you can. So we're gonna add on just at the very end. So it'll all be the same until you get to the pigeon, at which point we'll take the pigeon for the fold, but then we'll bring it around. We did this yesterday, some of you were here. Take it into a, a gomukhasana. Then we're gonna take that gomukhasana and try to lay it down. It may not be, you know, easy or simple or dainty or elegant don't worry about it you could even hold your elbows and you can really work with pressing the knees forward and down here from this we'll just turn it into a, a twist again just like we've been doing and then we're going to take that all the way into an asymmetrical sort of prone shavasana and then from there up to a gate pose and from gate pose, bringing it in and taking a camel, a big regular camel. So that's where we're headed, but the beginning's all the same. So you can start in child's pose. Hmm. Let's take a, a moment there out of the head into your bones, into your body. Try to integrate the mind into the body, the body into the mind. And roll your way up. Walk the fingers behind you, little camel, or as big as you want it to be, right? This is your practice. Go ahead and spill your way back down into child's pose. Come through your super rounded cat until you melt onto your front side and gather the prayer for full prostration with the prayer behind the skull. Mm. As you drop the hands, you slide the right hand next to your chest, the right knee up towards it, fall into your twist on your back. And then from that twist, you fall back onto your front side. Take the right arm, stretch it straight out, palm down, broken wing, left hand by your chest, left knee bends, Roll onto your back, 
you know, there's other ways you could work this one as well. You could even bend both knees and try to get your sitting bones a little further towards the floor. You could even take that left arm and wrap it behind your back. So you could play, you could experiment a little bit with that here. I'm not in a hurry to get anywhere. And as you come back around, that right arm is going to thread. Take your time, but it'll crawl underneath the left arm, over to the side. Left arm crawls over to the right. And when you squeak the hands as far apart as you can, you let the head fall, and then you check in and do a body scan to see where it's hard to let go. It's hard, isn't it? Often for me, it's this, the seat and the legs, how my seat wants to protect my low back or how my neck and shoulders want to protect me. We're going to add on one little thing here. So as you squeak your arms out, you get the WD-40 out and you and get your arms out and you can take a bow pose so reaching back and bend your knees and hold on to your ankles or just if you can't hold the ankles just reach back and then lift your whole body fly away from the ground this pose I love it it's like defiant joy this pose like even when gravity is weighing on you wholly and completely you can still lift up can still stretch your heart open you can still have a sense of humor and then you can come all the way down and gather yourself so take your time here you just went from a big back bend so you kind of have to feel your way back into your center for that plank hands under shoulders toes curl knees lift go slowly from the ground to plank and from plank to downward dog where the right leg will lift behind you and the right knee sweeps up towards the right shoulder. And the right leg flies away, pierce the stars, right knee to forehead, draw the belly in, try to swallow it under the ribs, right leg away and topple triangle. It goes towards the left elbow and shoots through, pick the left arm up and turn your belly, chest, heart, soft throat towards the sky, hand to the skull, and then go ahead and take your knee and elbow together one time. That's it, and two times. And last one, three times, and this time, slowly put it down, seated wide legs, flex feet, toes point up, walk it through the middle. As you bring it back, gather yourself in, knees come back, feet to the floor, hands behind you, white fit a few times each direction. And so you end up knees to the left, where you can come to stand on them. Oh. And then you start to turn that into your pigeon. Start to slide the right leg, scooch the right leg back. Hover, open arms, fly a little bit, flap your wings. So one time, two times, and three times a charm, and then you can let it sort of float on down. If you wanted to, you're very welcome, always to modify as you wish, but you might reach for the back foot here. Just a thought, you definitely don't have to. You could tuck it into the elbow, or you know, any one of these versions. Sort of like that thing, like if a tree falls in the woods and <laughs> nobody's there to hear it doesn't make a sound if you do a fancy yoga pose in your living room and nobody's there to see it <laughs> how does it change things hmm. and then from there we'll change it so you can come back where you take that back leg your right leg and you're going to wrap it over your left leg and come to gomukhasana so take a minute here to kind of Really shift the knees together, just like we did the arms now, same thing with the legs. I like to pick up the seat and kind of see if I can get my sitting bones to drop more evenly down into the ground. 
Mm, you could add a forward fold, or if it's enough just to stay here, let gravity do the work for you, you could. Check in. There seems to be some relation, right, between the hips and the jaw because these muscles are connected. So I, I wonder if that if you feel that when you let your hips kind of like ah, a little bit. Does there seem to be also a loosening of the jaw, or vice versa? When you let the jaw relax, does that have some effect on what's happening in your pelvis? You could, or not. So we're going to take this backwards now. You're going to walk it back into a recline position. So just the best that you're able to. Walk the hands back. I kind of scooch my seat forward a little bit so that I can kind of, what, what I'm aiming at here is trying to get the tailbone to like flatten out. So I, I push the seat forward and then I sort of pull the pelvis back a little and I find that that lengthens the tailbone out really nicely. And then you can readjust as you come down. You can tuck the knees a little tighter. You can try to even walk the feet apart more. You could reach overhead, hold your elbows, and then you could try to invite the knees to go forward and down any amount, even if it's invisible. And we'll take three breaths here. You let the back of your body try to find the floor, as much of it as you can as many cells of the skin of your back body on the floor as possible. So we're going to roll this one right over the left hip, over towards the left, into some twist, into just some sort of like, uh, there's nothing exact about this shape at all. It's just whatever your body organically finds and then keep rolling onto your belly. The right leg will stick out straight to the side. So the legs are like an L shape and you're on your belly. You can make cactus arms or make a pillow with your hands. Doesn't matter really what your head does. We're gonna turn that into a gate. So gather your hands back, come to stand up on that left shin. And so you probably have to adjust a little bit so the right leg comes a little more in line with the knee. Take it up and over to the side. Think about length between the bones of your spine. So side bending, great prep for back bending. It really helps to lubricate the spongy discs and all of the tissues in and around your spine. So trying, thinking you could even flutter here, kind of like back bend, forward bend a little bit. So you can try to access, try to get some sensation into all parts of the body on that left side. And, you know, also on the right side, you're getting compression, which creates hydration and is really good preparation for back bends and then you could come on up I'm gonna take a camel so both knees come in your knees are generally about underneath your hip pointers you could have your toes curled you can start with hands on the hips or you could even start sitting back on your heels and then let it grow from the ground up but you choose when you come into camel can you find right where your thigh bones connect into your hip sockets and right at that place, give a little hug back, draw the energy back, and see if that can allow your spine to maybe grow one more inch out of the pelvis and lift your heart one more millimeter up towards the sky. And then we'll just come back down to sit on the shins. So you can come out, either hands coming back to your hips and coming out, or you can just go back the way you came and sit down on curled toes and just for a moment just savor the effects of your practice. Maybe you feel a vibration somewhere or a buzzing or an energy in your body. And then 
last time through the whole sequence. So starting in child's pose, you could go ahead and let yourself pour down towards the floor. Roll your way up, walk the hands behind you, little camel, maybe. Down and back through child's pose. This one turns into a cat, come up rounding, shifting forward until you pour yourself onto your belly. Full prostration with prayer hands. Right hand to the floor, left hand by your chest, left knee slides up, twist. As you roll back onto your front, stick the left arm out to the side, broken wing, bend your right knee, roll over the edge of you. Any variation, right? So it could be, again, you could put both feet on the floor, could wrap the arm. As you come back onto the belly, the left arm will slide, palm down under the right. Right arm will walk away, drop the head. Unthread, come into your bow pose, bending knees, holding ankles. And then off you go, defiant joy. Mm, even when things are hard, it's okay to take pleasure in your life. And then you can let that go and slowly, slowly, we build the plank, gather the hands, tuck the toes, engage the legs, connect the low belly to the low back, and then start to rise. Downward facing dog, left leg lifted up and bring the knee to the shoulder, left knee, left shoulder. Fly the leg back, reach it into the stars, and left knee to forehead. Last time, leg flies high, left knee to right elbow, spin the back heel down, slowly shift the leg through. As the right arm goes up, it finds the base of your skull. You really press that right foot down, lift up your left leg as best you can, knee and elbow in, and they straighten. Maybe you hover, maybe not, and bring it in and straight and last time bring it in straight and you're gonna slowly sit down wide legs oh, walk it out hmm. walk it back in scoop your knees in Hands behind you, wipe it this way and that way. You're gonna end up over on your right side. So swing your knees over to the right, come to stand on them. And then slide the left leg back, hovering pigeon with arching and rounding. Lots of room, look at this, like a whole hand like this much room underneath and then eventually you slide it back and let it come down and you take your version so if it's a back bended version if it's a forward fold or a twist you choose and then we'll bring it back no rush, but we'll meet in Gomukhasana. So eventually you can bring it around where the left leg is on top, but no need to hurry. And then you 
decide whether the body wants to fold forward or whether the body says, no, thank you. I'm really good, just right here. Just start to come up this time. Same thing, you kind of pick up your seat a little bit, scooch it just slightly forward, try to curl the tailbone underneath you. And when you come back, trying to get that low back as nice and long as possible. Lie back in some form of Gomukhasana on your back. It could be very different from what mine looks like. Just any attempt at creating some shape like this, you might hold your elbows. And then you're trying to let the knees drop. Start to roll over that right hip through the twist and eventually all the way into a Left leg stuck out to the side, prone, Shavasana for a moment. And then hands under your shoulders, come on up for gate pose. So you've got the left leg out, the right knee underneath you. And you can take your side bend, so this side open and wide. Either way, you're getting hydration all around your torso. The side that's compressed, ah, it's so at ease. This left side is like on vacation in Tahiti. And the right side getting open, both of them getting hydrated, getting resilient. And then come on up and one final back bend here. So take your camel and I'll just, you know, throw it out there. If you wanted to try something that's a, a little more challenging, you could take camel into wheel. I don't know, I haven't done this in so long. So let's see if I can even do it. <laughs> but I can show you what you could do is you have to have your toes curled under and you would start with your hands in prayer. And so you start, you go kind of through the camel and at some point you'll feel your body's really intelligent. It doesn't want you to fall on your head. So the arms are going to catch you. And so you go back, you go back, you go back. As soon as the arms hit, you straighten your legs as much as you're able to. You can walk them out. And then when you come back, you've got to walk them back in. You go backwards. You kind of have to push with your hands, get the knees down, and come on up. Whew. Wow, that's a cup of espresso right there. <laughs> so that's just the thought, right? If you wanted to, but you're in your own house and you don't have to perform for anybody. How great is that? So it could be just, could be invisible camel, the most gentle, sweet little baby camel or anywhere in between. So you try to be where you can live in it and then you can come out slowly, really tenderly, gently come back, just sit for a moment, sit without rushing to the next thing, sit and feel what you feel, just on a purely physical level, purely energetic level. And then we can take it into a happy baby on your back. So as you come around onto your backside, just reach your legs up, give them a hold and rock a bit. So it's a good little neutralizing shape after a back bend. It gives your back a lot of relief. You can rock across the back, kind of like, like you're trying to smear your back into the floor, get every cell of the skin of your low back, give it a massage, make sure you're pressing all of it into the floor. Mm. Mm. 
And then the last little bit here, be up to you. So for a gentle version, you could take just a legs up the imaginary wall, or if you have a block, you could slide it under your seat. We could do that. And then you could do just a hug of the knees and a Shavasana. If you wanted to, you could do also a shoulder stand. A shoulder stand and a plow and then Shavasana. Okay, so you choose one of those two options or maybe even something different altogether as your last thing here. If you're in the shoulder stand, you could start to come through plow. If your legs up floating, you could come through a hug of the knees. And then take, you know, any last moments as always. Just treat yourself really well here. Take good care of your body's needs in these last few moments. And you can start to make your way into Shavasana. Take a really, really deep breath. Bring it in, bring it in. Try to sip in even a bit more at the top. And then as you prepare to exhale, open your mouth and just let it fall out. Do that again. Really wide breath. Really full, rich, deep, filling every little corner, taking that last extra sip or two, maybe even a hold in at the top. And then a big open mouth just... Ah, you can take as many of those as you need as you prepare to return. You might rock your head or wiggle your fingers. Mm. You may be covered in a pile of toddlers. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> or cats. If you want to stay on the ground covered in toddlers or cats, you can. <laughs> or you can start to hug your knees in or rock to the side. Any, anything goes as far as coming home. Coming home and 
Arriving again in your noble seat, remembering your magnificence. No rush. Mm. Want to own with me, please do. Thanks, everybody. Oh, Sarah, that was the best at the end. My kid still does that. He's 13, and if I'm laying on the floor, that's total invitation to find my mom. <laughs> I don't know at what point that changes or if it ever does, but it's so great. <laughs> I miss that. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. It was so nice to be with you on this rainy day. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you very much.